Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, August 15th. Okay, so today we are in a little bit of a weird vibration just because, of course, yesterday we had that Mars Jupiter conjunction that just sent like this ripple effect out into the cosmos, to the universe, really affecting our headspace, our perspective, our ideas, our opinions, and furthering our options and opportunities. And of course, Mercury, who was in his place of power, is still retrograde, but he crept back into Leo energy at the very end of the day. So we are definitely in this, let's call it fluctuation. We are trying to go with the flow. We are, again, very impacted by this Mars-Jupiter conjunction in this Gemini energy, which has us divided, which has us torn. The intensity is rising in these particular choices. And now Mercury going retrograde, of course, back into that Leo energy, our heart and head need a little bit of time to think about it, to communicate, to kind of, you know, just get in alignment, to get on the same page before we're about to take any kind of actions and make any kind of moves. So just keep in the back of your mind that we're in an adjustment phase, okay? I know we've been going through a lot of adjustment phases as of late, but with the conjunction such as the one that we just had, we're going to, again, need a little bit of time for these energies to settle. Now, the moon is still very much in the Sagittarius energy, giving us the most optimistic, positive type of perspective of emotion, of mood, of attitude that we could possibly be in. But the moon in Sag is going to go void, of course, at 12.53 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We lock into Capricorn energy exactly one hour later. And the two aspects that are taking place in that gap where the moon is void are super helpful once we will talk about that when we get to it but basically there is the sun chiron mercury and neptune doing a little bit of a tug of war here for our time energy and attention and it taking place while the moon is void is pretty significant because again we are in a fluctuation state so let's just talk about the transition from sag energy to capricorn energy for just a second it always feels like we hit a brick wall when we shift in that Capricorn energy. And it is actually a really good energy for us to be in because first of all, it is a cardinal energy. So this is like empowerment, time to initiate, time to make some, let's call it boss decisions. Um, it's an earth energy, which brings us down to earth. Thus, why we feel like we hit a brick wall because we're kind of flying high in la la land. Uh, with that moon and Sag, we're, we're very optimistic, we're very positive, we're very confident, but we tend to overdream, over exaggerate the uh, possibility of our dreams. So the reality check that comes with that earth energy is always a little bit harsh, especially when we first dive into it. However, the Capricorn energy gives us a little bit more of a serious mood, a serious attitude, because we have to start like getting our shit together and actually like get things done. Okay. We want to be productive. We want to see some progress because the busier we are with our to-do list, with our tasks, with our chores, the less we are getting distracted by our thoughts, by our emotions. Capricorn is big on just like, let's focus on the real world here. Let's focus on the to-do list. Let's, you know, pour our time, energy, and effort into something tangible that we can see the evidence, the proof of, and actually feel semi-accomplished. Let's keep the emotions, let's keep the mental plane, you know, distracted, busy until another time. So it is going to work out for us, but the adjustment coming from that mutable fire sign of Sag to the cardinal earth sign of Capricorn, always very abrupt. Keep that in mind. Okay, with all of that being said... Um, there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. So we kick the day off with a pretty good energy, if I do say so myself. We have the moon in Sagittarius energy trining beautiful interaction with the sun, who, of course, is shining a bright light in this Leo energy. A trine indicates that we are working with like elements and we would be Sagittarius energy is a fire sign. Leo energy is a fire sign. So fire energy helps us to kind of burn away the gunk, the heaviness. 
really help us burn through the attachments, cut the cord, so to speak, that we've been kind of tripping up on, holding us back. Then it's a regenerative type of energy. So it reignites the fire, the spark, the flame within us. It puts a little bit of pep back in our step. It's a time of creative action. We are in a state where we are making some progress. We're starting to see little tiny little shimmers of clarity. So this is going to work in our favor. And of course, anytime that the moon and the sun are coming together, there's going to be more clarity. There's an aha moment. There's an emotional awareness. The Sag energy has us all hyped up for a new quest, a new adventure. The Leo energy that the sun is in has us bold and brave and courageous enough to pivot in big ways, make some major moves and actually follow our heart space, follow our passion. Then the moon in Sagittarius energy is going to be trining Chiron. This is important. We just had this beautiful interaction with the sun. Now we're having a beautiful interaction with Chiron. This is still fire on fire energy. Chiron is the wounded healer. He is retrograde in this Aries energy, helping us feel good about ourselves, this new version of self, seeing where it is that we are growing, we are healing, we are fixing, we are repairing certain issues that have been holding us back from really going after what it is that we truly want, we truly need, we truly desire. Um, the reason why I say keep this in mind is because the sun and Chiron are going to be one of two interactions in the sandwich, in the gap, when the moon is void between the moon being in Sag and the moon being in Capricorn. We're going to talk about that when we get to it, but just an interesting little factoid that this is how we're starting the day and that this particular interaction is also going to be kind of intensified midday when the moon goes void. Okay. So the moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who of course is in Taurus energy. We have to kind of suspect that anytime that we are kind of raising our vibration, we're in a good mood, we're in a good attitude, we're in a per perspective that is like favorable, we're building towards taking action, we're building in our self-esteem, our self-worth, our self-confidence, we have to expect that negative egoic programming to kick in and start talking shit and really speak a lot of fear into a lot of the good things that we just arrived at. That's just how it works. This is why we do the cha-cha-cha each and every single day between our heart and head. Anywho, the moon making this tough interaction with Uranus it is definitely taking the wind out of our sails. It is definitely beating ourselves up and breaking ourselves down just when we kind of reach a new awareness of self, of our wants, of our needs, of our desires, of where it is that we want to go from here. Suddenly, our ego starts talking smack. We're really not sitting in a good situation where we're, let's call it, thinking and feeling as clearly as we did earlier in the day. If this was a positive interaction, we would gain clarity. We would have the jolt, the energy to pivot, to take a risk, if you will. Now we're starting to talk ourselves off of this, let's call it adventurous cusp that we just found ourselves upon, which of course doesn't feel good. The moon is then going to get in the boxing ring square off with Neptune. So Neptune, he's retrograde in his place of power in this Pisces energy. And of course, the rose colored glasses have been bitch slapped off of our face. This is what happens with Neptune in a retrograde. We can't dream. We can't lose ourselves in La La Land. We can't bury our head in the sand. We have to deal with life as it is, not for the way that we wish it would be. But Neptune brings an element of confusion an element of being so, let's call it energetically, emotionally, mentally overwhelmed that we just like want to curl up in a ball and just check out. And of course we can't do that. And so emotionally speaking, a square puts us in a tension point, a conflict point, because we're going through major growing pains. There's this hesitation of the old version of self. There's this new inclination of wants, needs, and desires from the new version of self. And now we're going to fight it out. And emotionally speaking, we do get overwhelmed. We do kind of, you know, psych ourselves out. We do lose ourselves in a not so nice narrative. We create the confusion. We're the ones kind of speaking again, this fear into something that was very clear, very exciting, very inspiring earlier on in the day. So of course this doesn't feel good, but it's going to kind of illuminate for us where it is that we are either allowing our higher self, our intuition 
to show us the possibilities of excitement, of inspiration, of adventure, or we're allowing the negative egoic conditioning to speak fears, doubts, and insecurities into something that we know in our heart space we have to do, we have to pursue. The moon is then going to trine, which is a beautiful interaction, with Mercury. Okay, so Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, he is still retrograde, but now he's in Leo energy, different vibe right? Up until this point in the Virgo energy, we were just trying to analyze things, critique things, break things down, look at things matter of fact. Now we're bringing our heart space into it. Now we're bringing our intuition back into the equation to see if the vision, the goal, the dream that we have been working on without emotions being kind of involved here, we're dropping it into the heart space. We're seeing how our physical body kind of responds to this new vision, this new goal, this new dream that we were semi excited to pursue. So of course, a trine means that we are working with like energies. This is fire on fire. So it is going to help us burn away the confusion that we were just sitting in, burn away that tension, burn away all the fears, doubts and insecurities that our ego programming spoke into this goal, vision and dream that we were very excited to pursue. So the moon being our heart space, Mercury being our head space, they're on the same page. They're working together for a common goal, which is to bring the excitement, the inspiration back, the passion back, the desire back. It's at this point in time, 1253 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that the moon is going to go void, of course. And when the moon is void, things are shaky, things are uncertain, they're unstable. We start second guessing, we start picking things apart. So we kind of, you know, ended off on a very good note with this trine between our heart and our head. And here is what I kind of alluded to earlier in this forecast. So while the moon is void, we have the sun shining a bright light in this Leo energy, trining with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. And if you'll remember back to the beginning of the forecast, we kind of started off the day with the moon trining the sun, the moon trining Chiron. Well, now the sun and Chiron are trining each other. This is growth. This is healing. This is empowerment. This is us opening up our mind to problem solving from the heart space instead of the head space. This is us really listening to our intuition, listening to our heart space, our higher self on what we need to do, what we need to pursue to not only push ourselves forward into a new path, into a new direction, to pursue a new goal that actually gets our heart space very excited for what could happen, for what could come. But we are also in a situation where, you know, this Chiron energy being retrograde in Aries, it is about our identity. It's about who we want to be. And of course, this whole process is unlearning the conditioning that put us in a mold to be the version of self that we have to be in order for society to actually love and accept us and return to who it is that we were born to actually become before the conditioning, before the programming, before the trauma, before all of that, return ourselves to our most authentic self, our most authentic vibration and frequency. So this is a pretty powerful thing. Now, seven minutes later, okay, we have Mercury making a very, very tough and uncomfortable aspect with Neptune. Now, this is, again, we're still in the void sandwich, if you will. Mercury interacting with Neptune in this way, in this harsh way, is going to like, I want you to think of a bobblehead, and I want you to think of tearing the bobblehead off and shaking it really, really good, like a magic eight ball, and then putting the bobblehead back on the little figurine and watching him shake, 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 shake until, you know, he comes back to a homeostasis stable point of, you know, stability. Now that is us. Okay. You are your own bobblehead. Mercury and Neptune interacting in this way is going to shake, rattle, and roll our headspace. This is mental disorganization at its finest, okay? We have multiple windows open. Some of those windows are playing songs. We don't know how to close them, okay? We're, we're super, super distracted. 
We are kind of all over the place with trying to think our way through what we're supposed to be feeling our way through. So this is why I say that these two particular aspects taking place while the moon is void, yes, one is very positive. That sun trine Chiron is definitely putting us in the heart space the realm of understanding what we need to do, what we need to pursue by listening to our heart space. Mercury and Neptune are confusing the head space so that we literally are so combust in our head space, we can't rely on our thoughts right now. We're not making any sense intellectually, logically, rationally, or practically speaking, but we have a gut feeling. We have a heart feeling. We have a higher self feeling. We have an intuitive feeling on what needs to be done. And this is the most important thing. And then what happens, 1.53 p.m., we lock into Capricorn energy. So we anchor that shit. We are anchoring that energy, that realization, that epiphany in. And that's when we feel like we hit a brick wall. However, we're going to have Mercury make a positive interaction with Mars. So Mars is the god of war. He rules over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger. He's in Gemini energy, again, pushing the boundaries of our mental plane, really coming up with a plan, a strategy on the options, the opportunities that we could be choosing for ourselves and what that would mean for our long term selves as well. But Mercury, of course, is retrograde and he's in Leo energy, which means that our heart and head have to be in alignment before we can take action and make moves on any of the options, on any of the opportunities currently on our plate. Now, the beautiful thing is, is that when Mercury and Mars are working together, it's like we're putting our, let's call it intuitive calling, right? Heart space, our perspective and vision, head space into action in the mental plane. Action is Mars, Gemini is the headspace, okay? So we're thoroughly trying to walk ourselves through what a potential option, opportunity, path, direction would look like, would feel like, could mean for us short term, long term. This is actually a good vibe because we're building inspiration and excitement towards one goal, vision and dream over the other. So again, gaining clarity. If you haven't listened to the astro class that I put out there for the Mars and Jupiter conjunction on my Patreon, definitely pop over there, either become a member or just, you know, download that episode on its own. This is setting us up for some major astrology from now until about the 19th. And because this conjunction just happened, and again, like I said, there's a ripple effect still reverberating through the cosmos because of this particular interaction, we are going to be gaining huge insight, huge clarity on what path, what choice, what decision, what direction is now going to trump the other. So we have the moon in Capricorn energy now, okay? making a very positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer who was retrograde in Aquarius energy. This is the first interaction that the moon and Capricorn is going to make the most intense one that you could possibly make in the most favorable of ways. Pluto is here to help us like focus in, hone in on what needs to be done here, what we need to plan what we need to research, what we need to explore in order to make these plans actually be legit for us to actually put into action and start, you know, executing upon. Pluto's retrograde in Aquarius energy is supposed to be highlighting the power struggle within, but the Aquarius energy has the greater, grander vision. We're able to emotionally detach, which the Capricorn energy helps us do as well. So we have the Capricorn energy of the moon. We have the Aquarius energy that Pluto is currently retrograde in, both helping us to emotionally detach, to act as the observer, to see the long-term vision, goal, and dream in kind of alignment with our current options and opportunities in order for us to figure out what feels the best, what we feel more in control, empowered to actually do, to actually pursue. This is a major shift in our mood and our attitude orienting again to a long-term goal, vision, and dream that is now starting to make a whole hell of a lot more sense. The sun in Leo energy, then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune retrograde in this Pisces energy. So this is like creativity, 
coming from the higher realms of, of intelligence, again, Neptune, retrograde, you know, in this Pisces energy. So the metaphysical realm, our higher selves, intuition, or something greater, grander than us. We are, we are being downloaded with an aha moment, a vision, a dream, an intuitive insight, some sort of aha moment, some sort of light bulb going off. The sun shining very brightly in this Leo energy, we bring it to heart, okay? If it activates our heart in a happy way, in a passionate way, in an authentic way, we are able to bring it to life. The sun shining a bright light on what needs to be born, what needs to be created, what we have to bring to life, what we have to be bold and brave and courageous enough to actually do, to actually pursue. So the last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Capricorn energy making a positive interaction with Uranus in Taurus energy. We have Capricorn energy and Taurus energy. They are earth energies, which means that we're focused on the physical realm. We're focused on our physical bodies, on our routines, on our money matters, on our relationships, on our long-term plans. We are focused on whatever reigns supreme, whatever needs to be done here in this physical realm. But here's the beauty of it. The Capricorn energy wants us to focus on our long term because we have to start building the foundation and the structure that is going to house and support us, encourage us for the long term. Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy, needs us to take a risk, needs us to start thinking outside of the box, needs us to abandon the rut that we've created in our physical realm, even though it's comfortable, it's familiar, it's predictable. We have to bust out of this rut. We have to understand that staying in the same old, same old right now is going to prevent us from ever aligning with the new long-term goals, visions, and dreams that we are now starting to piece together in our heart space and in our mind's eye. So emotionally speaking, there's like a lightning bolt that comes at us because again, just remember here, the Capricorn energy we, we want to get shit done. We want the best outcome for ourselves. And we are not so attached to this, you know, what we've been doing. The Taurus energy is, the Capricorn energy is a cardinal sign, which means that we've been presented with the information. We've been presented with new options while the moon was in Sagittarius. That's a mutable energy. Mutability means that we're being presented with information and details that supports being flexible and adapting and making a change. Now, in a cardinal sign, this Capricorn energy is ready to take action upon that new perspective, upon that new information. As long as it makes sense for us to do it, we're able to pivot in a cardinal energy and actually start building something in the short term that is going to support us in the long term. Now, yes, there is going to be a little bit of resistance coming at us from that old version of self because the Taurus energy, again, is a fixed earth sign. So even though we know that we want to change, even though we know that we have to build something new, we're going to resist making those changes at all costs, procrastinator energy, let's say. Well, the Capricorn energy, no, it's on the to-do list. It needs to be addressed. It's a problematic situation. Let's do something about it now. Let's come up with a plan now so that we can stop thinking about it. We can actually start making some progress towards taking action and making this initial move. <music>